Okay, so you've been collecting toys for a little while. By now, you have a certain routine. You know how much funding it generally takes for you to buy the next toy. You probably have certain shelf space allocated for your next items coming in. But now, a new item comes along and maybe you want to start a new toy line. Something that you haven't collected in the past and you're wondering, should I add to what I already have? Is it worth jumping down yet another rabbit hole? Hey, I've been there before as well. So what I'm here to do is show you and talk through three easy steps that you can follow, whether you're an experienced collector or you're just starting out. Let's begin. All right, maybe you've been collecting for a long time or a short time, but you know what you like, you know what your friends like, and you probably collect within a certain community and know other people who buy the same thing. But all of a sudden, something comes along to maybe trigger you to jump into another toy line. Maybe something hooks you in that you were into in the past, or maybe you're just starting to like a certain franchise right now. But you are afraid to start because it looks daunting. It looks a bit intimidating. Where do you start? How do you start? How deep do you jump down the rabbit hole? Also, how much shelf space or funds can you devote to this particular new item or items? So I said I was going to offer three easy tips of advice. So let's jump into it. Number one, and the most important bit of advice I can give you is set easy limits for yourself. What I mean by that is plan an escape route in case you decide not to go further down that rabbit hole of a toy line. Are you thinking about starting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Well, don't just grab the first thing that comes along. Make sure that you grab either the core cast of characters like the four turtles, which you can actually see right here behind me, or if it's another toy line that has a large ensemble cast, like let's just say the Transformers, maybe what you do is you grab the leaders and the iconic characters. Optimus Prime, Megatron, Bumblebee, Starscream, Devastator, Grimlock, Soundwave are all great items to grab. And if you end up stopping after just a small core cast, hey, at least you have something that looks picturesque and iconic on your display shelves. So I guess what I'm saying is if you decide to stop after just a very limited point, such that you don't fill all your shelves with that particular toy line or that extended large cast of characters, you've got your escape route. You don't have a bunch of obscure characters that you can't remember what toy line they're from because they're not surrounded by more iconic characters. Number two, get items and characters that mean something to you personally. Now, maybe that could be from childhood something to the effect of maybe your parents bought you that as a kid or you got it as a birthday gift and it means something to you at a special level so that when you do buy it and put it into your collection it doesn't seem like an outlier even if it's not a main cast or main core character though a lot of times they are one and the same the character you attach to as a kid is the same as the core characters of the series or franchise anyway now on an extended note with regards to that item number two that I just mentioned a second ago, you might also have figures or characters that mean a lot to you today because of where you are in life. I hate to keep using the example of Transformers, but I will. Maybe you work in a certain industry where a specific vehicle um, or alt mode is prominent in that industry and it reminds you and gives you a little bit of, a little bit of pride, a little bit of joy to um, see that vehicle in your collection because you deal with it in your day-to-day -day life. I have friends who are police officers. They want the Transformer character known as Prowl because he's a police officer or they like Red Alert for the same reason. I'm not saying to use those exact examples, but they are examples that you can follow as you collect. Now, before we get to number three, I just want to give a shout out and a special thanks to my Patreon supporters and channel members whose names can be found in the description section of this video. You can visit patreon.com slash toy connections or join the channel membership, which you can see next to my name in the description below as well. Now for number three, do not chase trends. Yes, toy companies will give you a lot of options about what to buy, especially the big companies, but you control what you buy not the toy companies. If you see a lot of people on Facebook or Instagram or any social media outlet scrambling to get a certain item that you are not ready for because you just haven't decided if you're gonna jump into the toy line, don't get into it just as a fear of missing out. Yes, maybe in some exceptional cases you can get it if you know that you can get rid of the item later and maybe recover some of your money. To me, that's the exception, not the rule, but don't use that as an excuse to start a toy line. Don't chase trends as the way to get in. 
And along that same line of thinking, have you ever thought about getting into a toy line, you walk into a store and you grab the first peg warmer you see because it's low hanging fruits? I have. If you've been in the situation as well, I'm going to say this, stop doing that. To me, that's very much the same as chasing trends and looking for an excuse to get into a toy line. Once you get in, you want to get in and you want to follow the three rules here. So just to summarize, make sure you've got an easy stopping point if you decide not to keep going with that toy line. Number two, get something that means something to you personally for the reasons that I said just earlier on. And number three, do not find yourself chasing trends under any circumstances. Otherwise, it's not an organic collection and you're letting whatever's out there on social media dictate what you collect. Remember, your collection has to last the long haul. It has to be a long-term collection. And if you chase trends, then you're not adhering to some of the items that are in this video. But again, this is all just friendly advice. And if you do happen to agree with what I say, you know, or if you have further feedback, just put it in the description below. I'd be willing to listen to any and all of you. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful and you'd like to see some of my other content, I'm gonna put a history, toy history playlist right up here, which you can click on. And down here, you can click on a Toy Connections Top 10 Countdown. And with that, I'll see you again soon with some more of my favorite toys. Thanks again, and take care.